Hello, hello, this is Irene with Soga Talks. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Just to get it out of the way, follow Soga Talks right here, right now. Don't waste in a minute, okay? We're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube and major podcasting platforms because you don't want to miss our conversations with fascinating people in tech. And today is fabulous day because Eve Molkers is here. Eve, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking, Irene, and uh, thanks for the invite and uh, having me at the Saga Talks. Absolutely. The pleasure is mine. It is because everyone is talking about AI and analytics and data nowadays. It's at least in my bubble. Okay, probably in yours because our bubbles sometimes overlap. So anyways, Eve, you are the right person to discuss these topics because you are a strategist. You're a data specialist, but on top of that, you're industry analyst and very pro prolific blogger. We will ask people to go and check out the fabulous, helpful materials you have on your website and what you do. So Eve, let's start with, uh, with um, a tangible example you shared with your audience. I was so captivating, captivated by that example. You lately put some uh, time into researching how Spotify is using data analytics with AI to really extract, data, uh, extract value from their data. And we're all Spotify fans and users. So can you please, yeah, from professional standpoint, what do you see interesting happening with Spotify and how we can all learn from it? Well, it's, it's about what they do with the data is bringing value to your audience, people, the consumers of the platform. That's, that's where their take is and how they try to optimize that you enjoy the platform, that you enjoy music in, in a better way. Uh, find these little gems that you, back in the days, you had to crawl through all the crates and, and, and find the vinyls or whatever you had to listen. And this is in a, in a different way how you're consuming music. And that's so interesting that you can do that with data. So they can build your profile and suggest you some, some music that is really on, on your taste or maybe in the mood of your day. So I'm already going a bit further on what they could do with the data by, by just analyzing your behavior, how you consume the data, when you consume the music and, 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 and what you uh, really like. But another interesting by researching how Spotify is, is using the data is how they use the insights of the, of the listeners, of the audience to help um, performers as well to get connected to their audience. So they're helping them in building the community and getting a, a better matching towards the people that would consume that, that music. If you have a, a radio station, it's, it's much broader on how you can present uh, the music to your audience. And you tune in to a radio station because you like the presenters, because you like the music, what they're broadcasting, but you don't have that direct match. You have that now these days with the digital footprint. And I, I think it's a few years ago now that I think of it. I've, I, I was talking to... Uh, a company that was analyzing all the digital streams from the radio stations, all the digital radio broadcasting in US. So you could fine tune, in fact, the music that you are broadcasting to your audience, but as well at the same time, of course, all the all the commercials that you're presenting to uh, to the listeners in in that. So it's it's on various levels that you can use the data uh, to optimize uh, on one hand the commercial aspect, but on the other hand as well, how you are enjoying and uh, enjoying the platform and consuming the music. Absolutely. Have you looked at some of their predictive uh, models or algorithms really underneath of that hood in Spotify? The reason I just want to hear this because this is a fantastic example that everyone can relate to. And if you are in more traditional industry, if you are not a media or even consumer business, right, there is so much to learn there. I advise everyone to check out if blog because it's right there with all the details. But if what are your comments on the predictive actually tools and functionalities they're using? Well, in a predictive way is, is looking at what type of music could you maybe enjoy in the future? How much time would you spend on the platform on certain days and, and so on and so forth? And 
identifying some trends in music. Maybe some there is a new stream, a certain type of music uh, that gets uh, more attention. Maybe a, a certain uh, performer, a singer, producer that gets uh, more attention. So that's that's these are all interesting takes where you can uh, bring more in the same way. And I think what they all do is as well not to consume, well, to produce the same type of music or uh, propose the same type of music uh, to you as a consumer. That's the big risk what you had back in the days. There was an artist who uh, had a big hit. So the second and the third and the fourth uh, uh, episode or the, the song that they produced was in the same way because they wanted to the producers to produce kind of same music in the same way because they say hey this song did it it was number one in in the charts uh, let's let's try to make a same type of song but then you can get kind of well the music doesn't really sound authentic it's it's not from the heart that it is it is too thought through in such a way and i think with the data you can help that uh, steer in in a different way